this will probably be the last uh, video before the mini expansion, like 99% chance, but here is Barrel Right Shadow. This deck list specifically comes from a Japanese pro player and YouTuber, Rikze, which uh, I will link in the description. You can check his video out and also check him out if you want, yeah, right. Anyway, uh, this list I think is pretty interesting. It has some interesting picks which maybe aren't that common, so. Before we jump into the game, just want to look, take a look up at a bit of what is going on here. So, first thing is uh, Freya is in this deck list, which maybe is a bit strange for Barrel, right? But uh, your Barrel right can't be as fast paced as it used to be like a couple of expansions ago, just because the Handula is gone now, so you don't really have a way to refill your hand as your Barrel writing. So you want more of these follows so that you can just play and draw into your key cards without having to barrel right, which is what Freya's doing here. And um this deck is very reliant on Memento and Septic Shrink, Mirowell. These cards are very important to draw and uh Freya draws all of them, so Freya's solid pick for this deck, which is why it's here. Um there's only one Mikhail because he gets in the way a lot of the time. You ideally you would like to invoke him more, I think, but when you draw him, it's just so bad, you don't really want to do that, so that's why he's only at 1. Um, now the uh, more interesting card that you might have set your sights on is uh, Feel Their Fear. If you don't know what this card does, which I wouldn't blame you because we don't see this one very often. Um, it makes your opponent discard a card from their hand. And if any allied 4 play point follows have been destroyed this match, you perform Necromancy 8 to return 1 to your hand and make it cost 0. Of course, the main target for this is Septic Shrink. Uh, Septic Shrink, of course, very solid damage card for this deck. It's actually a very strong card in general. Um, now that the deck is being built around Memento, your Septic Shrink is recovers 2 PP and heals 4, I believe, in total. Yeah, it heals 2, but it does this twice, so it heals 4. Which is extremely valuable in this meta, especially because of a relative lack of prevalence of like full OTKs early on. Most decks don't rely of course uh there's still loot store which can full OTK. Uh dirt kind of come close to a full OTK but a lot of these decks generally will not go for like a one turn immediate like explosive kill which makes the healing extremely valuable. Um, against buff especially, the discard is also very useful, and since this deck has a lot of barrel right, it generates a lot of shadows, but you don't really have anything to use those shadows for, so Feel Their Fear is one of the options. You can consider it as extra copies of Septic Shrink. Uh, it only costs 3 if Memento is available, so yeah, that's the reason why this card is here. It's just more damage, more healing, and a little bit of disruption. You can consider cutting this if you want, I think. And of course, the other thing that really stands out here is uh, Uranus. Um, haven't seen this card in a little while. If you don't remember what it does, um, you banish your enemy for 3 defense or less. Then if you have 20 cards to in your deck, restore 3 defense to the leader and evolve it. And when he is evolved, sorry. When he is evolved, his strike deals 3 damage to the enemy leader. If you have 5 or less cards in your deck, it deals 9 damage instead. Um, the 9 damage will rarely come up, it's mostly here for the 3 damage. And I understand it's a bit awkward to be running Uranus in a deck which relies on reanimate 4 because he can get in the way of summoning uh, your Shaptic Shrinks at times, but he's there as uh, insurance for a bit of damage, especially when you don't draw Mirowell. Um, according to the original creator Rig Rigze, he was saying that um, if you don't draw Mirowell, your turn 6 is Love Lord and Necrom Necromancer. Then you have another 4 PP to work with, you can just drop a Uranus down for 3 damage out there. And also, in the late game, you can just use Uranus to finish off games or get rid of wards in the way of your Love Lord Necromancer if you don't manage to uh, activate your Memento. Um, of course, you can also consider cutting him, I think. But, I mean, he's just there for insurance, right? It's a somewhat useful cut to have, but. I understand that he gets in the way of reanimate, so you can consider cutting him if you want, but for today's game, this will be the deck that I'm running, and I'm talked, I think, enough, so let's just jump into some games. 
So for our first game, we'll be playing against Dirt Rune, going second. And I'm um, going second, you really want to find Memento. Um, you see, I'm just tossing everything here. You really want to find Memento because that's how you will get your game started. Um, going second, your only advantage really is Memento and that one extra card draw you get from going second. Which um, usually is not enough to overturn the lead your, the tempo lead your opponent gets from going first because you have a lot of... The meta is full of decks that benefit a lot from going first right now. So um, in order to get your advantage, you really want to be trying to find a mental, which is why I played Freya here and draw a mental. Um, we can bot to, afford to be a bit slower on the board here. Carrot one is not generally good for turn one, I should mention this now. Uh, as you can see, I saved the carrot one, I saved the leads, and just because uh, carrot one is not really a good turn one play, um, your hand will, if you start DRing from turn one, bear writing, so you start bearing cards from turn one, you often run out of cards pretty fast, especially if you don't draw mental. In this case, I have a mental, so it's not that bad. And also, um, Carrot One, if you bury, if you play her at one, your Septic String comes out a bit earlier than you would like. And sometimes, if you don't draw Septic String in time, you will get something else out of it. So, in order to combo your Septic String with your cards like Mirror Well and Love Law and Necromancer, you want to play a bit later. So, usually around turn three or four is a good time. And usually around that time, you'll actually be getting value out of the 2 damage ping anyway, so uh, you should probably aim to delay your carrot one a bit for later. Here, they're just doing regular dirt rune stuff. And then we have Memento, so of course we are going to evolve Memento. Uh, of course, extremely, extremely powerful effect for, on Memento. The deck is much worse without Memento. It's probably one of the most important cards to draw. Um, here, just a quick note on order. You, I played uh, the uh, what's it called? The Searing Strike was it? I already forgot what the card is called, and I just played it. Where is it? Where is it? Wait, wait, huh? Ah, this Hellfire Strike. Sorry. Um. I played it before trading and that was because I wasn't going to get value out of the AoE anyway so I was just saving the shadow so just a little point to note there just keep that in mind you know when you're looking to play your Hellfire Strike just uh, you can afford you can like sort of control your shadow count just to not waste the shadows on the AoE that wouldn't have done anything so yeah and as you can see my opponent's having a good time playing their cards Um, I need to, here I'm just looking for more cards, right? I haven't found Memento, I, I mean not Memento, Mirror Well yet. So I can just bury more and then because of what I've drawn here which is Carowin and Spectral Stomp, I can actually make it all the way to 5 burial rights this turn. Which will let me start activating my synergy, so um, of course uh, evolving uh, this guy that made in here is worth more damage than evolving Asuka and Shiori, so that's what we do. And now we have a bunch of Carrot Wound Amulet set up for Lovelorn Necromancer. You can see um, Carrot Wound is at 6, Carrot Wound is at 6, so when I play Mirror Well, it will go down to 3, and then Lovelorn Necromancer will finish this off on turn 7, which is the goal. And this turn uh, is a bit of an important talking point, I think, so I'm gonna take a moment here. Um, of course, the easy move that you straight away think of will be uh, you trade Mikhail and then just play Mirror Well and evolve Mirror Well to uh, do Mirror Well things and we all know this is the standard uh, Barrel Right play and in this, uh, spoiler alert, in this case I would consider it the correct play but uh, because there's a lot of burst damage that can come out from Dirt Rune once they get their Undying Witch active it's important to consider whether you should prioritize healing with, say, Septic Shrink instead. It's not always the correct play to just go straight for Lethals here. I mean, go straight for Mirrorel here. You need to uh, actually think and see if you can afford to play Mirrorel. In this case, um, it, at 7 PP with Undying Witch active, the most damage that Dirt puts out is Levi, Levi, Evil, Crimson, Sword, your Face, and then Colossal Summoning, which is I believe 16 damage 
which as you can see I'm at 17 now so I will survive that which is why I can't afford to play Mira well here so that's what I do but worth considering of course you should be uh, know your opponent's deck, know how much damage you can output and make sure you don't play into uh, they are lethal by just rushing on Mira well like this in this case it was fine of course Oh, luckily, get Mira out here. Go start hitting their faces. This is the uh, quintessential uh, dirt. Uh, sorry, not dirt. Barrel right gameplay right now. Did interesting. They didn't play the celestial uh, command convergence here, which I feel like might have actually saved them. So probably a misplay from them here. But they went for uh, the. What's this thing? The the the, the cake diabetes golem. So we we'll just play that with a uh, Lothlor Necromancer. And then important note about uh, Lothlor Necromancer, of course, sometimes you may may not see a lethal in your hand of Lothlor Necromancer, but I mean it draws four cards. You can generally expect it to draw you a lethal at some point. And then here I'm just playing through death here for self po style points. Of course, I could just play Septic String to begin with. But you know, just gotta show off the card. And that will be lethal, so that is it for this game, let's go on to the next one. So, for our next game, we are going second again against uh, Loot Sword. Uh, the fan favorite, not fan favorite, the favorite deck of this channel, of course. We all know this, my favorite deck. Well, maybe not, but my one of my favorite cards, anyway. Uh, as you can see that hand there was extremely strong here, this is very powerful turn to play with a ton of key cards with Carrot Wind and Septic Shrink already in hand, which is why I kept it, and uh, of course you don't play Carrot Wind on turn 1, like, rarely ever do, is it worth it? Just because you want to execute Spectral Stomp here, right? Um, I would not recommend keeping Spectral Stomp in Mulligan unless you have another cheap barrel right to go along with it. And if you have been paying attention to the game so far, you may have realized that it's what turn 2 and we've drawn 3 of our 4 invokes, so the game is going very well for us already. So, um, uh, Sweet Soul Necromancer just a bit of healing here, and also to get Spectral Storm active, but I drew Carrot Wind here, which um, is more useful to get rid of their board, which is why I prioritize Carrot Wind here over Spectral Storm, and hopefully Spectral Storm will have a chance to play B Plate later. And then they trade for us here, which is good. Here comes the Tony, and here comes Tony number two. So a very weak turn from them, but we don't have Memento, so our turn's not looking much better either. Uh, still no Memento, so we're just gonna use my Misguided Maiden here. Even though I like, um, sorry, just to pause and mention real quick, I don't necessarily recommend just immediately bearing Septic Shrink every time you have her in your hand. Especially going second against against uh, Loot Sword or cards decks like this, you want you might want to keep her for the healing effect that she has on her BR. But in this case, uh, probably keeping leads is more useful. So I buried all my septic shrinks here, and then uh, I am at five barrel right, so the shrink can start doing damage, which is good for me. And there's Rogers on curve, as expected. Could not have gone any other way, really. I mean, they did play two Tony, it's kind of expected. And here comes the scout as well, so they're gonna draw through a lot of their deck. This is just healing up, doing damage to my face, but luckily we don't have. We have like a non inconsequential amount of healing, so it's pretty okay for us. And this is actually coming out of Carrot Wind. Uh, and of course we start healing here, because we don't want to die. Uh, I'm not sure about keeping the Love Lorn over the uh, leads there, but I guess it's fine. And that's the last Revolt Remnant. This Revenant was very, is actually very valuable. As you can see, we really need that Re Revenant to uh, have enough hand cards for both Mirawell and Love Lorn next in the next two turns. Uh, here's their healing with uh, Opulent. Love healing of course. I believe you can heal the fool with that. It's a bit nasty. 
Oh, they didn't, they didn't play the other goblet, did they? Ah, uh, whatever. Anyway, they're at 18 now. So, of course, um... Here, we are not in danger of them killing us for two reasons. First reason is because we're at full, and unless they have a zero-cost flag in their hand, which they obviously don't because they haven't played first mate, we're not in any danger of dying. Secondly is, um... We know they don't have Barbaros in hand. The reason why we know they don't have Barbaros in hand is because they are at 9. If they had Barbaros in hand, they would have fused a loot to make sure they have hand space for whatever they top deck. And they don't, so they don't have Barbaros. So we can just very safely go for Mirawell here. And of course, as standard Mirawell goes, you just evolve, bury. Of course, avoid burying the Ruinous. We do not want to reanimate that. Okay, here comes the Spectral Shrink. And the Septic Shrink, so. Um, put a lot of damage to our face. Hopefully, this will let us finish next time we have our evil point. We have Love One Necromancer. It should be pretty good as long as we actually draw a follower next turn, which hopefully we do. But here they had a very weak turn. They kind of clear this board. I guess they didn't think to save their opulent last turn for some reason. So, unable to clear this board, we can just finish them off here by playing Uranus. Just, you know, show off. Draw the attack card. So obviously they don't have Barbaros here, but even if they had Barbaros, we would have still won. So yeah, it's fine. It's a good game. Next game. So our final game will be against everyone's favorite deck, Buff Dragon. And once again, we are going second because this deck hates me and doesn't let me do anything but go second. So I'm gonna toss the whole hand here just to find a memento. As I mentioned earlier, you do not want to keep Spiteful Stomp by itself. Spectral Stomp, sorry. By itself, because it's not very good. A uh, bit of a weird, awkward, heavy hand we have here, so... Um, just trying to find our... Oh, is this hand so bad? We're just trying to find our... Uh, <laughs> Uh, memento here, right? So we're just burying all these heavy ass cards. We don't need and we don't ever need more than one mirror. That's why you happily bury the second mirror well there. And here comes Carrot Win. Bury the Septic Shrink here. I don't think there's gonna be a chance for me to play her, considering how awful this hand is. So just trying to draw a memento before I die. And there's Kyrie. Which is fine. And here the Uranus actually really gets in the way because I have... Um, okay, let me uh, explain. This is going to be a bit of a long explanation, but... Uh, obviously, the question is whether to bury Uranus or uh, Lothlon Necromancer there. Um, now you see that I drew the third Lothlon Necromancer, but... Uh, that was my second level of Macarena, so burying that was obviously a bit risky as to whether I would draw the third one to be able to finish the game. Unfortunately, that was a choice I made, because if you bury Uranus here, what happens is your, your forecast pool will get uh, destroyed followers. Your forecast pool gets uh, diluted with Uranus. And to explain what happens with that is... Um, you won't have enough damage to win the game, right? Um, without... Memento, your damage for this deck is significantly, significantly nerfed, and the reason why it's significantly nerfed is because uh, Lothlon Necromancer only recovers 2 PP. You play her on turn 7, which you have 7 PP for, and then she recovers 2 play points, which means she costs 4, which leaves you with 3 PP. And if you notice, the difference between the 3 PP and the 5 PP you would have if you had Memento in play is very huge simply because it's the difference between being able to afford to play septic shrink or not so this is a huge deal for your damage output if you don't have a mental which is why uh i need to get all the damage i can to be able to win this game without memento so bearing uranus will heavily heavily nerf my damage by diluting my four cost pool which is why i opted to bury sept uh Left Lauren there and just hope I drew the, drew the third copy. Luckily, I drew the third copy here, so everything's hunky dory and fine, right? And here I'm at 5 BRs, which means that it's time to go for um, e the Maiden Evo just to get the Septic Shrink out. Here I made this trade, which is trading the uh, Misguided Maiden instead of the Septic Shrink. This just plays. 
it's a bit debatable as to whether it's better to keep the shrink, uh, trade the shrink and then keep all three followers alive. This one plays around Sandstorm better. And uh, it's also, my opinion, makes the three, the four health, four, four defense makes it a bit harder to clear. So there's the Bevenon there to protect my uh, septic shrink, but they have the Grand Slam Dragon Tamer, so it does not matter. And here comes the Blooming Dancer as well, just to clear my whole board while keeping their entire board alive, as Buff Dragon does. Well, I guess not entire but they lose one follower. How sad for them, right? And here comes a bit of a difficult spot. Because, well, as you can see, I trade and I play Hellfire Strike, so this clears that board, right? Now the question is, do I play any followers here? And, and the answer that I came up with for this turn was actually no, I don't play anything here. And the reason why is because I want to make sure I have enough cards in hand because Mirrorwell needs to bury two and Love Floor needs to bury three cards. If you look at now, if I play Mirrorwell, I bury two and then I have two more turns of top decks. So if I play, maybe if I, let's say, okay, let's say if I play this Ghost, right, I will have three cards in hand. Then I will... Well, I can play the Ghost and go face, right? And then I have three, the three cards in hand, I can play Mirror Well and Barry 2 and then Love Lorn. And then I'll have the next two top decks, which means I'll just barely have enough for Love Lorn. Of course, there is also Remnant to, to keep in mind, but Buff Dragon has a decent amount of uh, banishes. And not only that, is that after Love Lorn, I need cards to chain into, which means that I ideally want to keep my Ghosts just because at 3 PP, Ghosts are a major source of damage because you don't have anything else. Um, so the, that's for that reason, I opt to uh, play nothing here and just preserve my hand just to make sure I don't uh, run out of followers to bury. And hopefully that will pay off for me, right? And there comes the Coral Spirit, so it's actually already paying off because uh, this makes sure that I will have hand cards to bury even without that ghost from the remnant. And then of course Mirrorwell comes down here as as expected. Uh here I went and buried Carrot Worm, which I would say was a pretty big misplay. Uh part of Barrier Right is of course identifying when you need to save your certain cards. Uh burying Carrot Worm when in a situation where you don't have mental active, having your left one having Carrot Worm and leads to deal with uh wards on board is pretty important because Lothlong only gets rid of two followers so I should have probably kept Carrot when there instead of burying it and I could toss Memento because honestly Memento is not doing shit for me the rest of the game but that's just how I played this time and then just this and hopefully the ghost will be enough to a uh, make sure I have enough to finish the game next turn from here that's the Olivia Sylvia to clear my board like pick up the ghost and that's the coral spirit and then uh mega Loka. this mega Loka is actually super annoying so uh this turn is a bit so um if i play love law and necromancer okay i'm gonna be honest here and tell you straight out i i just missed guaranteed lethal this turn um so there's guaranteed lethal, of course. A uh, Love Lord Necromancer will destroy two followers and deal six damage to one. So it, this is the only thing that can survive six damage. So if Love Lord Necromancer destroys this and this and then deals six damage here, this will be a tree. And Love Lord will be able to both have dealt six damage from Hero's effect and then Evo and deal six damage. So that's exact lethal with Love Lord. Love Lord, uh, Love Lord plus Evo is exact lethal here from 12, right? But then if this ward survives uh, Love Lorne's destroy 2, then it will have 3 health, which means that Ghost 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 trait into it will be lethal, guaranteed lethal. Uh, apparently I didn't think of that because I forgot that uh, <laughs> Love Lorne, I forgot about Mirrorwell's effect dealing AoE damage, so I thought that I needed to hit Coral Spirit or I instantly lost the game. So uh, for some reason I didn't just bury the three things that aren't ghosts here, I actually buried one of the ghosts which almost made me miss lethal. 
But luckily for me, oh, it's a 1 in 3 chance to begin with, but luckily I got rid of the uh, Coral Spirit, so there is lethal for me. So I just keep in mind, pay attention and don't be dumb like me. And yeah, that's it for this game. So I managed to uh, achieve a nice array of the 3 meta decks uh, for this video, which was lucky for me. I hope you got to see uh, how Barrel Ride plays against those 3 decks. Uh, really, I went second for all the games, which pretty unlucky, but oh well, it's whatever, right? Anyway, I hope you have an idea of how to play BR now. A bit awkward once again that it's like the end of the mini, so I don't know if it's worth to go out of your way to craft this deck. Just to see it go even worse for the next expansion, maybe. We don't know yet, right? I mean, not next expansion, the mini. The mini. But yeah, I just thought I'd show off this deck. It's honestly pretty fun. I, I had fun playing this deck. I had more fun playing this deck than Dirt Rune, actually. Even though it's worse. And I think I won about as much, so... <laughs> yeah, I just don't know. Anyway, the point is... Uh, this deck is interesting, has some interesting... I love these decks that have like really weird and niche cards, like feel their fear run inside it just for some reason. It feels very nice to play it. Uh, if this deck interested you, maybe you can give it a shot if you want, especially if you already have the cards for it. But yeah... Uh, Hope you have an idea of how to, how I play this deck. I wouldn't say that my deck, my way is the correct way, but this is how I played the deck. Uh, went easy, went decent for me. So yeah, that's it for this video. Next one will probably after the mini is already released. And yeah, see you next time. Bye bye.